Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. I'm Connor Williams, joined by Cal Brannan, uh, and today we'll be discussing Marcel Brand's transfer window, uh, just getting some thoughts on him, how we think he's done, uh, how we think he has been performing as the director of football. And um, Cal, starting off, um, Marcel Brands, we'll start off with the dead obvious one. As a director of football, do you like him? Yeah, I think... Um... I think he's he's the scapegoat, isn't he? I think he is the scapegoat for everything that goes wrong at Everton now because he's the one who's consistently there. And a lot of people still don't... Or well, not still don't, because I wouldn't blame Mashiri either. Uh, don't want to blame Mashiri because nice, fancy new stadium, lots of money, you know what I mean? So Brands is the scapegoat. I don't think he deserves it. I think he deserves criticism, and I said this the other day on the stream. For example, this window, he deserves criticism because there were cheap right-backs out there. Way we could have done something, but at the same time, I also think he does. He does a lot of good for us. He, you know, keeps us relatively financially stable when it comes to after dealing with Steve Walsh. And I think you know what we we rave about Louis Campos. I don't even think he could have done a good job coming in after Walsh. You needed a miracle man, and I think um, the problem with Brands is the club hasn't found their own identity yet. And a lot of people say, well, shouldn't that be the director of football's job? He still has to speak with the owners who we've still got, like, for example, Ken Wright, who still wants us to be <coughs> typical old Everton, wants us to be the same as we was in the 80s with no progression forwards whatsoever. Then you've got Mashiri, you know, I think there's, I think it's, well, you know, he's on the board and I think that's the slight good thing about it, in me and in the board, is that maybe now he'll start to have more influence and we'll be able to, you know, have brands his way, which, you know, might be the future of the club, but... um I think he's a controversial figure. I think he's got I think he's got more positives than negatives, but I also think he need, really needs to iron those negatives out if we want to progress forward as a football team. Yeah, I mean, I, everything you said, I agree. Um, I would love us to have an identity. I've said it to you and I've said it on this channel a million times. I'd love for us to identify how we'd like to play. Let the director of football go out and get players to suit that style. Get a manager who plays that style, and then we'll never have to hear the words "they're not his players" because every player will suit that style. But that's a dream world that we seem to live in that we're very far away from at the minute. And um, speaking about brands, though, um, this window—it's been an interesting one. Like you said, we were always going to be struggling, and I think we reap what we sow, and it's really come back to bite us. You know, the, the, the phrase, all your chickens come back to roost, couldn't be more personified than this window for us. How do you think he has done this window, considering all the obstacles in his way? In the circumstances in his way, very, very, very good. I think not many could have done it better than him. Yes, we could have signed a right back. Yes, there was tunnel vision with Denzel Dumfries, but I also think he did a fantastic job with everything. I think he expected to be able to get in Dumfries because of his connections. And I think if the club would have hurried up with it and did it before the Euros, like his plan was, which he came out and said, this was my plan, then we'd have all watched him in the Euros, laughed at everyone else and gone, look at the bargain we've just got. But we didn't. I think that is... A... I don't know if that's a problem with Brands or Mashiri, the tunnel vision. I don't know. I personally do think it's Mashiri. And in the end, a lot of people say, well, can't... why doesn't Brands say something to him? You know, one thing I didn't mention it on stream the other night, but one thing it came to my head uh, was the manager situation. Every manager from Brands's list, Gaultier, Potter, um, who else were we linked to that was quite exciting? Um, Ralph Rangnick. Um, have we not noticed that all of these fit a certain philosopher? Every manager fits it. So I think Brands is trying to get it in there. And I think maybe, um, I feel like Mishiri's gone, no, let's hire Rafa for now, get to Bramley Moore, and then we can start making this identity. And listen, don't get me wrong. Um, I don't think Rafa's a bad place to start an identity. Fast counter-attacking football, that can be our identity now. So all we know is going the future, Brands, these are the players you look for. These are the managers you look for, you know, something and stuff like that. And I do think... I think there's more identity than we think with the Rafa signing. Because I think maybe Brand has tilted his finger. Because Damari Gray, for example, I think is all Marcel Brands. I think Damari Gray is all Marcel Brands. And then, you know, for example, fast counter-attacking football 
a team that likes to cross a lot. Andros Townsend, Solomon Rondon fit that perfectly. Good crosser in Andros Townsend, a fantastic crosser and a big body to target in Solomon Rondon. So I think um, I think now it's about, for example, if the big step for Brands next, say we sack Rafa, we need Brands to use his boardroom influence, foots down, listen, look at the squad he's built. We want a fast counter-attacking manager in or someone who can at least adapt to the game to play that to an extent. For example, Graham Potter. I think Graham Potter could easily play fast counter-attacking football if he wanted. I think he could. And I just think we need to be intelligent now. And I think, you know, we complain that we haven't done it in the past. But if we do it now, Brandy's next big step is to, you know, really use his ballroom influence to get a philosophy into Goodison Park, into Bramley Moor. And I think that's the I think that's the big test of that's upcoming. And if he does it, then he'll prove a lot of people wrong, in my opinion. No problem. Well, you've mentioned obviously um sort of the manager the director of football and Farhad Mishiri. Um that is one criticism that has come ahead is that um it's a criticism and it's also a sort of gives him the benefit of the doubt, I think is that it's not solely down to him. Farhad Nashiri and a couple of others are sticking their heads in. Uh, too many chefs spoil a broth is the appropriate term, I think. And the manager experience, the managerial selection was a prime example of that. I know you had Ken Wright that would happily have seen David Moyes back in the job. You had Farhad Nashiri that wanted um, Rafa Benitez mainly in the job. And then you had Brands who, like you said, wanting Gaultier. Um, apparently him and... Majiri liked Martinez. Um, you know, we had Graham Potter selected uh, and a couple of others. Um, Ratlick Ragnick's a prime example. Um, so it sort of goes as a positive for Brands in the fact that he struggles because he's working with a, a football owner who won't let him do his job solely. But then the negative, because a lot of people think he should put his foot down and sort of say, I'm the director of football. You've hired me for this. Please leave me to do my job. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Because obviously even that alone puts brands in a slightly tough situation to go to your boss and go, you've hired me, leave me alone. I don't think he has to do that. I think he has to, to put it simply, Farhad Majiri is not a football man. He doesn't know anything about football, in my opinion, or not enough. I think he looks at, Ra- he said it, Rafa Benitez had the best CV for the job at the time, which he did. If you go off a pure CV, but it's and you look at it and you go, yeah, but this isn't an accounting job, Farhad. There's a lot more in um, to take in than just a CV. And I think Brands' his problem is he maybe is a bit too quiet in the boardroom. No, none of us are saying, put our foot down as in start screaming, backhand Bill Kenwright, tell him to shut yeah. up, and then say, Farhad, listen, this is my way. All he has to do is keep, in my opinion, throwing suggestions in bringing, for example, a presentation. Do a big presentation in front of the boardroom. This is my vision. Here's an example. Um, is it Ma- Marcus Edwards? No, that's a player. What's his name? Edwards from Liverpool. Sporting director. Michael Edwards. Yeah. Going, you might not like it, Ken Wright, because you're stubborn, but look over there. Look across Stanley Park, what Edwards is doing. Look at... Um, Man City having a full sporting team. Uh, you, uh, Spurs have just took the new approach, hiring um very well with it with their, their director. And look at that, they've used a guy with a massive influence in Italy to bring in really highly rated Italian players. Now imagine if we actually did that with Brands, and when he went to the Netherlands to scout players, we actually let him scout and buy those players. He's a good negotiator. We know that. It's well proven. And I think it's just the problem of he doesn't like he's been. I think he's been told that this is a vision, but he's not being allowed. Or he's can for here. Mashiri say this should be our vision. You go apply that vision instead of letting brands do it himself. But I do think we're going to start. Hopefully, we're going to have enough faith in brands. We're going to see him start to put a foot down and put his stamp on things which might be fast counter-attacking football and we might see more signings like this when Rafa leaves we see a counter-attacking manager come in I can't think of one from the top of my head um, counter-attacking fast counters not a lot of possession I think it, is it uh, is it Gerard Sion 
Uh, ooh, um, he's he's yeah. meant to play quite direct football. Yeah, I don't even think it has to be direct. I think it just has to be fast, and we prepare to be play to play not on the ball. But even I think we're working to have the centre backs learn to play on the ball more. I think we could easily transition into a possession side if the groundworks are there in advance. But I think that's the problem is, like you said, there's just too many chefs in the kitchen who've all got different recipes. And I think um, it's like Ken Wright wants Moyes and then he doesn't want Benitez because of his Liverpool links. And it's like, to be honest, I Bill Ken Wright should just be told to shut up and sit there in his chair and happy he's still a part of the Everton board. You know, no offence to the guy, but sit there, be quiet. This isn't your role anymore. And he might go, well, I hired David Moyes. I don't care. You're not the majority shareholder anymore. You're still a shareholder, so you still get an opinion. But I don't think he should be going, making all these opinions public and making the situation a lot more difficult than it is. Because then that makes Brands' job more difficult. And um, I think the problem with Brands is I think he tried to get all these men in and just didn't, just couldn't. Gaultier wouldn't join. I'm guessing Potter wouldn't join. You know, Martinez. The really good <coughs> Martin... point is we didn't push for Potter. We just he was just a name chucked about on the table when we discussed yeah. it. But um, I also think Potter would have said no. Because Brighton have been given a decent bit of money this thing. I think he would have said no. Martinez, we had to wait until after the Euros. And I think I'm guessing Brands thought, well, if we wait till after the Euros, there might not be enough time to do something. Or did we we hired Rafa during the Euros, didn't we? Or was it after? Just after, but uh, just I think after. We'd have, had, we'd have had to start negotiating after the Euros when he's yeah. back in Belgium or wherever he lives now. And I think it would have been more difficult. So I think that's the problem. I think the financial situation hasn't helped. For example, if this would have happened without FFP, I'd never think, I think Gaultier got the job, personally. You know, I think it was because, oh, because I'm close to my family. He got offered a big purse by Nice to spend. He's in Nice, lovely part of France, and Lille are worse than us right now with finances. So I think we know why he left. But I think <coughs> our financial situation didn't help us at all. And I think that's put brands in a more difficult situation. Yeah, you could say it's a, it's a, it's a nice, nice part of France. <laughs> <laughs> Until well, bottles start getting thrown. <laughs> uh, well, obviously, this window is always going to be a little bit tough, but we've mentioned a couple of other players. A lot of them I'm, a lot of them are being called Benitez signings. I think you can sort of see that in Rondon. He's definitely a Benitez man. Um yeah, a couple of more of uh, Rondon's the one that screams the most for me. Uh, Townsend definitely a Benitez sign in. Damari Gray is one I'm not con- I'm not too sure whose that is. Uh, I think but... it's Brands written all over it. I think it's similar to Godfrey, a young, decently young English, lots of potential to go for a lot more money if we sell them. Very talented. It's got Brands written all over it in my opinion. Uh, I think the one problem is everyone says. Um, the Benitez signings, but at the same time, for, for example, if someone who played Benitez's style of football, which for us is fast, counter-attacking, low possession, it very good at getting back into games as we've proven. If, let's say, we, we've got a manager called Steve Evans in charge. Steve Evans brings in um, Solomon Rondon, Andros Townsend. Uh, do we not then look at that and go, they had decent signings for this style of football, or is it just we're looking at it because they've played under Rafa before and going, well, that's Rafa, that's no one else getting to side, or has Rafa spoke to him, two brands gone, this is the style of football I want to play, we've got no real veterans in the squad, well, we've got Fabian Delft, what does Fabian Delft do? Uh, we've got no real veterans in the squad, I want to play this style of football, They've got both of these uh, signings are going to cost us absolutely nothing, what do you think? Brands looks at it and goes, yeah, he's right, yeah, he's right. Yeah, he's right. How much are we going to pay him? Rafa comes back and goes, barely anything. He goes, yeah, perfect. I think a lot of people think it's because of Ancelotti, and I think this was under Ancelotti, where they didn't work together enough. But Rafa said, I'm happy to work with him. Branza said, I'm happy to work with him. I think, you know, they are consulting on these players. And I think 
in the end, they fit the style we're playing. And we're only saying they're Rafa Benitez signings because they've worked with Rafa Benitez before. That's, that's a very, very, uh, very fair point. Um, one thing I'm going to have to ask, and um, obviously this is a glaring one, and we were linked with um, Ainsley Maitland-Niles. Um, no right back. I know this window's tough, but you could argue this was a position that it's not just this year that people have been saying we need one. It's a position we could have done with last year, bulking up a little bit more. Uh, when we got Sadibe on loan, that really should have been a highlight that we need a proper right back. Um, explain to me a bit about the, the lack of right back um, and go into me a bit about, about the Ainsley Maitland Niles, because to me, it felt kind of like you said, tunnel vision with Dumfries, tunnel vision with Maitland Niles. And then when that didn't happen, sort of like, I don't know what we're doing now. Um, so just talk me through a couple of those. Yeah, well, I can already see the comments saying that I'm blindly supporting brands, but this might be a shocker for you. But no, he doesn't. I don't think he gets an excuse for this. He doesn't. He doesn't get one. We should have had a big list of right backs that we should have signed. Even, listen, I've said it. Option five is still better than none of them. You know what I mean? It's. Um, I think that's the problem. Zeki Celik was available for nothing. And they were willing to do a loan with an option to buy. Um, even if we don't look at right backs, Renato Sanchez was available for one. I know this is just Lille players, but there were players available. And listen, this might be controversial. I understand why Brands didn't buy Diaz, if we're not going to talk about right backs. We shouldn't have paid £40 million for him. No. Everyone's saying, yeah. Uh, and if I take away his highlight tape, he's had one, de- one good year in Portugal and a good Copper America. You know what I mean? I understand. Listen, and they might go well. I just, I, I don't think there's even an example to compare him to that works. Maybe there's a few, but I think a lot of people saw that Hamez was going to go the other way as well, and thought, oh, well, this is good business because it frees up so many wages. I don't think forty million was good business at all. We had a complete lack of money, and I think spending it all on one player who was a big risk, someone who you know was reported to not like playing in cold weather. I'd, would that really have been that had 40 million written all over it you know what I mean we complain so much about Steve Walsh signing people for big money and then not thinking about the negatives but then we complain when Brands doesn't do it uh, I think that's the problem but right back he's got no excuse for I'm not going to defend him for right back he doesn't deserve defending for right back there should have been a right back in this summer even on loan he might get away with it now with Aurea he might get away with it but I still don't think that gives him an excuse because something's fell into Everton's lap. Um, He should have had a list of right-backs, and I think this is the tunnel vision problem with Brands, and I think it's something Brands needs to sit down, assess himself, and go, I need to start having big lists of players. Like, he had this huge list of managers. I don't understand why he can't do that with the players. And I understand one man can't do (coughs) a job by himself. It might be the scouting team thing that I mentioned yesterday, but then at the same time, he should be getting his scouting team in. And he should be doing everything he can to get that in. Uh, so I think for the right back, I can't give you an excuse for Brands, to be honest with you. Well, since we were on about Brands, um, you know, I've just got this up because we mentioned it before. And uh, I do have here from EFC Stato from on Twitter. So if you like your stats and stuff, go follow them because this is really good. This is all of Everton's ins and outs from the Steve Walsh, Ronald Koeman era to the Marcel Brands, Marco Silva, Angelotti and Rafa Benitez era. Um, We won't go into Steve Walsh because I think fans already know very much about that. Um, But looking at Brands, a lot of his players are still at the club, um, which is quite good. Um, You know, since 2018, that's a positive sign. That's three years ago and we've still got a majority of them at the club, depending on the players. Um, So far on this, he spent zero on Bernard um, and obviously... The next one along is Moise Keane. He spent 25 million on. Um, and then obviously outgoings is Bernard. I only go through these because these are the ones that have come in and gone out. Bernard for a fee of 850k. Uh, uh, so he's made a profit there. And Moise Keane, we worked out before, is, you know, it, it says 20. Profit. It says 20 odd million here, 25, but with add ons and add ons from the sale. We reckon we might have lost a million, possibly. Uh, no, from Moise Keane, we've made money. From Moise Keane, we'll make seven million because it's Thank 32 million pounds. 
well, I guess he never really contributed. He to didn't that, achieve any of the add-ons, yeah. I don't think. Well, in that case, he's he's even more in the money um, by a, near enough eight million. Um, they're positive signs, though, uh, surely. And looking at the list, as I said, there's a lot at the club, and that's good. And it depends who's on the list. But looking at the list, the only person I think that fans, uh, the only there's about two names that I think ring out that fans will sort of begrudge. One of them is, um, well, free, Alex Awobi, but I'm going to put that under a Mashiri. Uh, Andre Gomez and Fabian Delft, they're the only ones I think people will actively begrudge. Um, but we're yet to see what we'll get for them. Um, I think he was kind of hoping, I think everyone was kind of hoping Fabian Delft might be able to get rid of and sort of make some of that money back. Um, but I don't think that's going to happen. Andre Gomez, I don't think we'll ever make that money back. But it's not an awful, it, from that window, three years on, He's had a, a, Paul said it the other day, he's had some bad windows. He's had a very good one last year's was a very good window. This one, I think we'll always have an asterisk to fans that can remember that this was FFP year. So that will always, this was, I don't want to say got him out of prison, but. And I, I think it's still good though. Yeah, I still think it's good. Do you think next, it puts pressure on next summer though, being the window that he will be judged for more? Yeah, yeah. But I also think, like let's, if I'm just gonna go through these lists and you know you've got your like for example uh, through what so from the Steve Walsh era there is only one two three four five six players still at the club those six players aren't gonna make up 170 million pounds <laughs> like those players who is it it's Calvert Lewin let's say 70 to be nice so that's 150. Um, Pickford, we might be able to get 54, so oh, 200. Hey, so we might still, you know, Michael Kane. Um, I I'd say we, I'd still, at minimum, we're going to be at least 40 million in the hole still, mm. you know. And then let's look at brands. Oh, I do, I honestly, I've said this to you, we might come out green. Richarlison, I think, think we could get 100, 100 million. That's the price, so that's 65 million pounds profit. Dinya, 50 million, 30, 40 million pounds profit. Mina, he may have cost us almost 30 million, but I honestly do think in a few years we could make a profit on him. I think he's got that. Gomez, it's bad now, but in everyone's a genius with hindsight, aren't they? When we paid the 22 million pounds for him, it was a good deal. Everyone loved it at the time. I think that's fair to say. Everyone was after his loan, which was a good loan. Everyone was in love Fabian with it. Delf for eight and a half million at the time was good. He was good at City. Uh, this, is the one, this is the only one I can't agree with. I, Thought it was a stinker when we got him. I, I don't, nothing at City that impressed me. I don't know though. He offered versatility. Pep Guardiola trusted him. If Pep Guardiola trusts you, this club. So for eight and a half million. Now, once again, hindsight makes it look bad, but I don't think. I think at the time we looked at it and went, it could be a lot worse. Gabamin is not Brands' fault. It's that not Brands. And is. I honestly do think he could make us back that 25 million. I do. I think he's that talented of a player. I honestly do see Alan dropping the starting role in a year or two's time just because of age eventually and Kabamin taking it maybe. Uh, Moise Keane looks like we'll make a profit on. Alex Iwobi's his big stinker that he cannot get away with. That under Farhad. I, I think if we're going to be fair, and, for example, I think Farhad was Wayne Rooney. I think Farhad was um, Cenk Torson, like we mentioned. Farhad could have easily been Theo Walcott. I, no, Farhad, I mean, again, I think was Genk Tosin because Allardyce didn't know who he was and Fahad Mishiri said he watched in the knee against Monaco and really liked him. But I also so, think Alex I think if we're going to be fair and we're going to blame all the bad stuff on Steve Walsh, we've just got to put all the bad stuff on Brands. Oh, yeah, yeah. He doesn't escape the fact that he's still, he's, he was still director of football. He still let yeah. Brands. So he, panicked at, so he panicked at Iwobi even though I think we both don't think it was him. I think we both don't. I think... He was forced to negotiate with Iwobi and then he just did his best to get Iwobi and Arsenal wouldn't budge. So he went and he might have went to Farhad, right, we have to pay 30 million. Do you want him? Yes or no? Yes, okay. He's doing his job. If he, Even if he doesn't think it's a good idea, if he's been forced into it, well, I think Bramford for 750 grand, we're going to look at that in five years' time and go, genius. Unkunku, same thing. Alan for 20 million, worth every penny. Hamez for zero. He literally can't be worth. He can't be better. I don't listen. I don't care about his wages. 
we didn't pay anything for him. And when he plays, he does a job. Um, Decore, fantastic. Godfrey, fantastic. And then this, in the end, Josh I think there's a lot of money. I mean, I'm going to say it, Josh King, we needed a backup, six month contract. It's, no. it's, I think we paid very, like four million for him, but in the end, two years ago, mate, before three years ago, we'd have given Josh King a three year contract. In the end, I blame Carlo in July for that. I think he'd still be at the club if it wasn't for Carlo. I think thing. I think he would have been our backup. I don't think I'd have wanted him as a backup, but I, I for the for that period wasn't an awful backup. No, it's what I mean. He didn't get a chance, and then Townsend good deal, Begovic good deal, Gray good deal, Longer Longer whatever his name Lonergan I think. Yeah, Lonergan. Just there. Rondon good deal. In the end, I so he spent two hundred and fifty two million. I guarantee you, after player sales, that's what. I've tried to work 100, 150. Um, I'm just going to look at the players that we realistically, you know, 150. Uh, Moise Keane makes that once. I think he's definitely over 252 million with sales. And I think, you know, that maybe having a director of football who can make money, if we look at that and go, well, we want someone who can bring the right players in. Uh, I think the big problem is going from Silva to Ancelotti. I really think that was the problem point and but at the same time you know where we should have identified a philosophy in the way Marco Silva played which in the way in the end is in that it's nice attractive football but then at the same time when you see Carlo Ancelotti available can you say no to that for the reason of a philosophy and Carlo Ancelotti saying I'll come to Everton I'll bring my free Champions League medals to Everton I'll bring all these trophies I think that's the problem I think if Carlo Ancelotti was never on the board, we'd have got went and got a progressive manager. I really do. Carlo, again, Nigeri, he's been wanting him for years. I watched, I think it was Tifo, explain it. When he first came to Everton, he wanted Angelotti, but Angelotti was offered a better job. He's been on Ange- Angelotti's, been on um, Nigeri's watch book for a while. Yeah, but I think even if you're Marcel Brands, if you've got your philosophy I, and then you're not gonna Carlo Ancelotti comes available, you've just got to throw your hands up and go, we can't say no to that. Yeah, you're not going <laughs> to... Did we expect him to get the Real Madrid job? No, we didn't. No. And if, if Does Madrid he have gets... the Real Madrid job? No, he doesn't, but that's not the point. But I just think... I feel bad for Brands because, yes, he's not perfect, but I think he's also had a lot of, like, smack-in-the-face situations that he can't control. You know, I, unlike Steve Walsh, I don't think Steve Walsh had many of those, personally. You know, we had a big stretch under Ronald Corman. Yeah, in no. the end, we had two interims and a full-time manager under Steve Walsh's. Steve Walsh doesn't have an excuse, in my opinion. No, I, he didn't have the uh, like certain like 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 Shabam is unlucky. Marcel Brands has Brands. got his good traits, his bad traits, but he's also been very unlucky. Did he think there was going to be a pandemic? Did he think we were going to go from Marco Silva to Carlo Ancelotti? Complete opposites. You know, did he think Carlo Ancelotti was going to leave a year later for Real Madrid when they might have had something figured out? No, that's the problem. And yes, Brand still has to take responsibility, but using Brands as a scapegoat is just giving it's giving the how poorly ran the club is an excuse and pinning it on one man when it should be pinned on the club instead. Well, I think that's a great note to um, end, end the video on because I was going to ask you your thoughts on brands, but I think it's, you know, that, that summed it up perfectly. Um, don't forget, guys, to like the video, subscribe, comment down below your thoughts on Marcel Brands. Um, try to judge him on the other windows, not just this one, because this one, like we've said, is an asterisk with FFP. But I feel like you do have to look at him as a whole, not just this window. And don't forget, if you want any of your Everton merchandise, tops, kits, mugs, badges, stickers, anything that the Everton shop are selling, you can get them through the Everton Direct link, which is in the description down below. It helps the channel out massively, and we all appreciate it when you do that. And we've got another bargain for you. It's the Damari Gray of bargains. Uh, and for £4.95, you could be entered into a raffle as we've teamed up with football prizes uh, for a chance to win a signed and framed Jordan Pickford Everton home shirt um, for this season. So don't forget to go check that out. Uh, link will be in the description down below as well. And stay safe. Everton!